hello and welcome to banks and markets and in this video i'm going to talk about information ratio performance measure because i have already discussed about trainer sharp and jensen in my previous videos so now it is about information ratio so the ratio itself was developed in 1973 by Jack Trainer and Fisher Black and here is the reference to the paper published in Journal of Business. Now this is the formula and you can see alpha again here which is similar to Jensen alpha that we talked um, in the case of Jensen Meijer. Okay, so now um, intuitively what you can say is this alpha of the portfolio which is the difference between the return of the portfolio and the return from the benchmark. So this numerator part, which is the access return, but access from the benchmark, it can be considered, it can be considered uh, the investor's average alpha if the average return to the benchmark is taken to be the expected return for the actively managed portfolio um, so that's the numerator part what it means is basically this part can be the investors average alpha um, investor average alpha because if we see it um, from the average return to the benchmark um, then average return to the benchmark if that is taken to be the expected return from the actively managed portfolio therefore the numerator part can be considered as the investors average alpha the denominator part which is this is basically the amount of residual risk or unsystematic risk that the investor incurred in pursuit of those incremental returns so um, when you see this this is also known as tracking error and it is a cost of active management of the fluctuations in the in the in the, the in the different periods of uh, the access return access from the benchmark okay um, now to see how information ratio can be calculated I have this example numerical example here which is that the express seat is available available inside the my blog banks and market inside the section finance so what do you basically need to do to find out the information ratio um, in this case where you've been given the active portfolio returns and the benchmark returns quarterly quarterly given okay so now first thing you do let's let's assume that they are all in percentage okay so the first thing you do is find out the difference okay so the difference because like it says in the formula here you need to find out the difference which is going to be um, portfolio take away the benchmark that's it I do not even need it, that parenthesis bracket there but there you go so you find them now you find the average okay now you find the average 
for the portfolio and the benchmark and the difference okay um, now having found them um, we may like to put it in in some decimal places like this okay I like like 3 2.8 not point 0.2 and then here what do you do is because in this formula you see this formula here what you have done so far you have found the the axis from the benchmark so that's the difference and that's what you found here 1.4 for the numerator now you need to find out what will go on the denominator on the denominator this basically represents the tracking error which means the standard deviation of the differences um, between the return of the portfolio and the return from the benchmark so that after you find the the rp minus rb which is here the average not point two this is what you need to find for now i will quickly say to you that just do the standard deviation and for the differences and you will get that okay so that's um, the the tracking error the lower the better so it is um, the job of the portfolio manager mainly the passive portfolio manager to reduce the tracking error now um, in the form of information ratio it is the return divided by this tracking error so access return access from the benchmark divided by the tracking error which gives you an information ratio of 0 0.20 now um, what you can do additionally here because the information given is quarterly you may like to find out this in annual term so just multiply it by the square root of four because there are four quarters in a year so that is going to give you annualized annualized information ratio that's not 0.4 so again this follows the same rule similar to SAR or trainer or Jensen higher the better but in this case in the case of this example the annualized information ratio is 0.40 so that completes my discussion related to information ratio do not forget to watch my another video thank you